Nova very Scotia. regions. Yeah, and Nova For Scotia. Basketball? Nova Scotia what? has ball players? Bro, listen, you got to put respect on North Scotia, bro. Halifax, HRM, yeah. North Preston. The first black community mm -hmm. in Canada mm -hmm. is actually started in North Nova Preston Scotia. in Nova Scotia. Preston, yeah. Hello and welcome to Thoughts Over Everything Podcast. This is the podcast where we receive stories, tips, and tactics from entrepreneurs who have done it. Today, we have a guest in the building. I'm excited to talk to him. We're talking real estate. We're talking entrepreneurship. So, my guy, can you tell, say your name? I don't want to mispronounce it. Yes, yes, for the people. Thank you guys for having me out. So, my yes. name is Eldon Holder. Eldon Junior, Holder. Because there is a senior who came before me, and we always got to honor the ancestors and the elders that came before us. So, nice. I'm a junior, so folks have to get it right. Eldon Holder Jr. Word. I'm a junior, too, actually. You are a junior? You yeah. See? yeah. Oh, that's the first time I'm finding out you're a junior. Yeah, yeah. My see, grandfather, see? great grandfather. Was ah, Alexander. You know see, what I'm saying? Alexander, Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most it. definitely, bro. So what part of the city are you from? So I'm originally from Ottawa. Okay. And uh, where I'm working now is here in Toronto, obviously. So we got our dream suites by the hotel, by the mm. by the airport. Mm. And we got our dream suite residence by Yorkdale. But I always represent the 613, man. That's my home city. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is dream? Because uh, you're in Toronto. We, we see the name dream by right. Isaac. We know what you're doing right now. But for the people who don't know about dream, uh, Dream Maker Labs by Isaac. What is it? How did you get involved? Well, it's funny. It's like we have an event coming up tomorrow, and it actually is called It Was All a Dream. It Was All a Dream. Like Biggie mm -hmm. song, right? Word Up Magazine. That's right. So, it's funny. You actually got wind of that event. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Y'all should be there. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be dope. It's, it's going to be a saga, at, right? Yeah, same as a saga at the, at the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the dream really started with Isaac, right? And him and his father at the early stage. His father is actually a real estate agent, a real estate broker. And I'm not going to tell his full story because I think, you know, I got to let the man tell his story on his own. But yeah. the whole concept was he realized that there was an opportunity to build wealth in the community through real estate. So he started his first real estate agent brokerage and he grew that brokerage from one property to another property, to another agent, to another agent. And I came really late in the game because he was doing a lot of this work for a very long time before he called me in 2017, 2018. And he said, listen, I'm making these contributions to different organizations, donations, right? to new college to create up the first endowment fund for African studies. I'm doing these investments in different companies and a lot of churches and basketball teams were coming to me for donations. And after you donate a couple times, you start to wonder, where's it all going, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's the impact? And as you continue to make those donations, you start to think, I need to have somebody who can help grow this in a yeah. way that's more strategic. And that's kind of how we came in as Dream Legacy Foundation. So he called me and he said, look, I need someone to be my number two, my right hand man to sort of support the whole process of growing the strategic impact. And uh, I've been doing community work since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Like I'm a, I'm a YMCA kid. I used to hoop after school, boys man. and girls club. Those, you know? those YMCA <laughs> those runs, YMCA runs are like serious. Every day, Friday, <laughs> like Pat. So where I grew up in Sarnia, we have like YMCA basketball runs were like, the thing I used to look forward to, like right? all, all the top guys in the city exactly. show up, <laughs> like, you know, it's a straight dog thing. You know that's what I'm saying? That's it, man. Like, it's just the dogs are all, yeah, That's how you cut your teeth ready for the oh, real man. world. You know? that's that's exactly I remember it. I like stuck my toe out there, man. Like, it's just like, <laughs> it was like the school of hard knocks of hoops. Like straight up. Starting is like a very uh, suburban city. Yeah. But we produce like the most talented basketball players. I believe it. Yeah. You yeah. have some hard dudes out there. Yeah. Same thing with like Nova Scotia, North Preston. Like those like Nova very Scotia. regions. Yeah, Nova Scotia. Basketball? Nova Scotia what? has ball players? Bro, listen, you gotta put respect on North Scotia, bro. Halifax, HRM, yeah. North Preston. The first black community mm -hmm. in Canada mm -hmm. is actually started in North Nova Preston Scotia. in Nova, Nova Scotia. Preston, yeah. So they have uh, a peace tournament that they put on. I'm gonna shout out to my boy Veli out in Nova Scotia. He's putting it on in August. Yeah. And it's a it's the peace tournament. Every year they put it on. COVID kind of messed it up a little bit. But guys travel from all across Canada, all across the US, because it's a cash prize tournament. You pay 1,000 to come in, and the cash prize is like 25,000 if you win the tournament. Mm -hmm. Those are the type of social innovation ideas that Dream Legacy Foundation we like to find and promote and encourage. So yeah, North Preston and Halifax, Nova Scotia, they got some real ballers out there. Um, I've noticed like Dream has really taken on like shape in the city. Like everywhere you go, you hear Dream, Dream, Dream. How did it get so big? And like, how did it start getting involved with the DMZ? Like you notice, like they gave, um, they started the Black Innovation Fund. Yes. How much did they give to the DMZ for that cause? So 
the Dream Legacy Foundation and Dream Maker Ventures and that whole dream ecosystem for a very long time has been working behind the scenes mm -hmm. with different universities, different organizations to build institutional partnerships. Mm -hmm. Without institutional partnerships, your programs don't necessarily have the staying power that's required. So with the Black Innovation Fellowship, if you go back to like 2018, 2017 and did a Google search of Black innovation and angel investment in Canada, mm -hmm. you would find nothing. Yeah, It's not until Isaac, the Dreammaker Ventures and Dream Legacy Foundation partnered up with Ryerson to say, listen, y'all have the DMZ here, but how come we don't see more black tech founders accessing this space? Clearly, there's a barrier to entry. What's the cost? And that's how it started. So we partnered up with the Canadian Women's Foundation, Shopify, a few other organizations, and now it's just grown tremendously where people are now seeing the value of creating spaces for underrepresented founders and the Black Innovation Fellowship is now entering into its fourth year. We've expanded into, it's actually Ryerson's number one fundraising um, program at this point now. Yeah. We have so many founders coming in from social enterprises to all across Canada. And now what's what we're promoting here at Collision is the uh, Black Innovation Connections Program, mm. which is kind of like the feeder program to the, the, the DMZ Innovation mm. Program. So we had like 10 folks that were approved every year. And then we realized a lot of really good businesses were getting rejected. And we said, we can't have them get rejected. Let's figure out how can we provide a program for them that will get them prepared mm. for the fellowship and the accelerator. So that's yeah. where the connection layer kind of comes in. Gotcha. Yeah. Most definitely. Now, what do you do like, when it comes to DreamMaker? Like, what's your role on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, man, listen, uh, that's a question I ask myself every morning because <laughs> I was like employee 0001. You know, from building the website to creating the bylaws to recruiting the first board members. Mm -hmm. So when I first came on, I was sort of the executive director of the organization. And now the role that I play is the vice president of philanthropy and social innovation. So what that really is code for is go get the bag, secure the bag for the secure foundation. The <laughs> and let's go look at new ways for us to build communities and build businesses. So that's the yes. social innovation side. So what you're seeing outside here at Collision is actually our dream hub. Mm -hmm. which operates like a social enterprise. It's a boutique hotel. It's got co-working spaces on the main floor. It's got these really modern suites on the second floor and this open conference room where you can use for weddings, mm -hmm. meetings. We just did a conference last week for the black entrepreneurship ecosystem. So it's really just building the infrastructure for community. So my mm -hmm. role really varies depending on what the needs are, mm -hmm. but philanthropy, which is raising money and social innovation, which is putting on for different ways to grow the community. Mm. So, so this is the first black owned hotel in, is it Ontario or Canada? Listen, so I have to do a full on like market research to get to the nitty gritty of maybe gritty. back in the day, you know, when Jimmy Hendrix and his mom, maybe, maybe they had like Hoover, a one, two room here you and know, there, call it a hotel. Call it a hotel. Yeah. But as far as I know, at this scale, yes. one of the things that we're proud of is at least here in Ontario, number one black owned, definitely in Toronto, mm -hmm. black owned hotel. But the way we're classifying is it's not quite the alt, not quite the Marriott. It's a very boutique, unique experience. When you stay there, you feel like you're getting a getaway away from the jungle of the city yeah. and your steps away from the airport. So, so is it like kind of like a mix of luxury and like a premium hotel? Yes. So it's like a semi-luxury hotel. So you're attacking like the middle class, yep. getting them a luxury feeling yep. at a very affordable price. That's exactly it. And the whole idea is you yeah. want it to be accessible for entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what's really dope about what happened here at Collision, I don't know if you guys saw the article, but mm. National Post put out an article the other day. There was a lot of challenges with visas yeah. to get into the country to come to Collision. So a lot of people who were coming from different countries got left behind. Mm -hmm. oh. And there was a delegation from Nigeria that somehow got their visas very last minute, mm -hmm. but could not find hotels in the short period of time. Mm -hmm. And DreamMaker Ventures and Dream Legacy Foundation used the infrastructure of the hotel mm -hmm. to give them space to stay during Collision. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect example of how building infrastructure yeah. can support the community when they need it. Most definitely. And, and we see a lot of communities like have great infrastructures, right? Yeah. Uh, something us as a community as well like black people like whether from africa or american when we come here to this country mm -hmm. building that infrastructure has been something difficult like you see with the chinese you yeah. see with the jews like an indian family comes down from like as an immigrant mm -hmm. other indian families like bring them in they know how to house them they have like the places to put them yep. in yeah um but some way some somehow for us it's always been like a challenge and there's like some sort of disconnect there that's holding mm -hmm. us back from really building that trust yeah. and even like when someone as great as what you're doing as dream maker 
as a community, there's always like that kind of like, ah, like, I don't know if it's good enough. Right, like, right. Is it a good hotel? <laughs> like, we're always putting down like yeah, our own, expect like, expect the worst kind of expect thing. Expect the worst. It's just <laughs> like, <laughs> and, but yeah. like, let's say like a white guy does it. Right. It's just like, oh, yeah, oh my God, it's amazing. Like, yes, yes. So, have you found that stigma there? Like, when you mm. tell them, like, this is a black owned hotel and, mm-hmm. and you look at it, it's like, wow, like a black owned hotel? Like, do they look at it like with the same like their eyes are lit or right. is it like kind of like still kind of like this um, skepticism when they when they find out that you're doing this so here's what's cool about the dream suites hotel is that you really have to see it to believe it yeah i could describe it to you i can tell you it's black owned i can tell you it's boutique i can tell you it's by the airport but until you walk into the venue and you see the stairs the marble stairs that go up into the skylight and you see the chandelier it's all angular that's looking over the skylight and you walk into the conference room and you see the finishes every detail was thought of so sometimes you can explain it to someone and they won't get it but until they go and they see it they realize that we really created something special for the community and it doesn't matter if you're black asian doesn't matter what background you are when you need a place to stay you want your bed to be comfortable mm-hmm. you want your bathroom to be clean and you want to be able to get in and out at your discretion man that's basically it those hotel beds always have the tightest like right you know like you can like whip your hamstring (laughs) proper fold (laughs) the proper fold everything not tight (laughs) most definitely i want to get back to uh, getting the bag yes so like when it comes to getting the bag what's your methodology of like reaching out getting that meeting booked getting that 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 money sent to you in the bank walk us through some of the strategies you found over time you know that so now that you're professional at it you can go and speak to our audience and showcase what they can do to Mm -hmm. reflect that with themselves so that's a good question man and i don't even classify myself as a professional but in in a sense like you're perfecting the craft right Mm -hmm. the craft of building a not-for-profit organization and it's really based on relationships yes you have a great program yes you have a great concept but do you have relationships with your community do you have relationships with the individuals that are shaping the program? Mm-hmm. Are you able to work with people in a constructive way to come up with new and innovative ways to solve these problems? Mm-hmm. So some of the things that we really work on is we try to stay as connected to the community as possible. We host a lot of online conversations. We invite folks to do breakout groups at our hotel mm-hmm. to make sure we have a good pulse on the community. And because we're national in scope, it doesn't just stop at Toronto. We have a lot of connections in Nova Scotia, as I had mentioned to you, and we're part of an ecosystem of black entrepreneur serving organizations. So there's about 38 organizations and we have regular meetings every Thursday to strategize on how we're going to secure the bag. Mm -hmm. So an advice that I would say to most people is stay close to your community. Some people get the bag and then they forget where they came from. They forget their roots. They forget their YMCA stories. They think that they made it because they got a grant for $250,000. That's not your money. That's the community's money. So go and put on for the community in the best way you can. And good begets good. Do good, get good. And it's kind of like a momentum building exercise. Mm. Big gems. Big gems, big gems. Um, when you when you actually get someone to start talking to you, you know, you, you, you reach out to them and maybe through relationships. Um, what are some of the barriers that you found continuously happen right. that you've been able to overcome? Oh, man, that's funny. When I think about that story, I think of when we were first getting started. We had Dream, we had the name. Didn't have a website yet, didn't have a logo, didn't have any programs, had no real credibility. So mm-hmm. most people were like, oh, cool, dream. Oh, you guys do like the, the housing stuff. You know, you build the condos. But because we didn't have anything to show beyond the sporadic contributions that Isaac had made over the course of his career, building that trust and aligning the brand was a big part of the early barrier. So you're mm-hmm. sitting in front of government relation partners, sometimes politicians, sometimes you're sitting to community and they're like, where have you been? Mm -hmm. You know, we know you in this capacity, but we don't necessarily know you in that capacity. So bringing all those experiences together and packaging it in a way that people can understand Mm -hmm. and draw the connection is some of the early barriers we had to overcome. And I would say for folks who are thinking about getting involved in non-for-profit or in philanthropy, sit down and really map out your strategic plan. And I want to shout out to Amoy. So she worked with us very closely when we were doing our business plan at the very beginning. We had some elders working with us and we had a whiteboard filled with sticky notes. Mm -hmm. That's how we figured out our six areas of focus. Health research, economic inclusion, financial literacy, cultural identity and convening. So those are not by accident. Mm -hmm. They're specifically chosen based on the needs in the community. And that's how we're able to get our brand and get our strategic direction down point. Mm. So was it like a trust thing, like where 
you've dominated like a certain aspect in business, mm. but now you're starting from ground zero. How did Isaac treat that? Did, was it a challenge for it? Was it like a excite, exciting thing for him? Was it like, damn, now like I got to start this again? What was like his attitude when starting fresh again in a whole completely different industry? So one thing I like about Isaac, man, is that um, he's someone who's got tremendous amount of commitment and determination. Yeah. So even if it might seem like a challenge at first, it's always around how do we solve the problem? Because really you know, his motto is, there aren't any problems, mm -hmm. there are only solutions. Mm -hmm. And the process to that solution is given to the person who's willing to work and try and fail and try and fail over and over again. So we always had a positive attitude. Like anyone, you know, you get roadblocks, you get frustrated, you get upset, you wanna fix things, you wanna wonder how many more times I gotta do this before I win. Mm -hmm. But it's always been, it's not about us, it's mm -hmm. about the community. That's why in the name Dream Legacy, mm -hmm. the operating word it's is community. community is legacy mm -hmm. if you're going to leave a legacy you have to be willing to overcome those obstacles and you can't be down on yourself when something doesn't go your way because you're not doing it for you you're doing it for your future generations, future generations your kids your kids kids you know you're a junior i'm a junior someone put stuff put on for us so now we gotta pay our way forward mm -hmm. as i always say man you know uh legacy is greater than currency Ooh. you know what i'm saying i like that one that's a bar that's a bar. Yeah. That's a bar, guys. I feel like that's like that's like a snap bar. That's a know? snap bar. <laughs> <laughs> click that. Click that. But do you feel like the the heaviness of being a junior, and also for you, Alex, do you feel like the heaviness of uh, uh -oh. carrying well, on your name uh -oh. and being a junior? <laughs> well, he asked you first, so you go ahead. Uh, no, you know what? I think it's it's actually an honor in a way. You know that yeah. that your your father or your grandfather or somebody decided to name you after someone. Mm. Uh, there is a responsibility. I think you have to carry with you because you're not really representing yourself always. You have that extra sort of like, if I do something wrong, that actually spills over onto the grandfather or your father. So there is additional responsibility. Uh, I wouldn't call it weight because I see it as an honor to go and represent for your father. And my dad is my hero. So whenever I get a chance to put on the Eldon Holder Jr., I feel like I got his superpowers back and behind me. Mm, amazing. See, I think there's a, there's a difference here is that like his pops is still living, mm -hmm. so he had a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Mine's is not. So you have no mm -hmm. idea. Like, I have what no kind idea. Of man he was. Was. Exactly. You have stories, but yeah. right, until you feel it yourself, Barely, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so there, there's a big difference there. So yeah. I don't have any pressure or like I, I can't really feel the honor because I don't know the person. You know, mm -hmm. my middle name is Thurgood though. You know, which is um, often named after Thurgood Marshall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a powerful name, right there. Exactly. Thurgood, yeah. So, so. That I feel like it gives you even more because then you get to learn more about him, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, that, I think that kind of gives me more more impact. So uh, you know, but working towards wrapping up though, you know, um, what are some of the uh, things you like to leave with our audience? You know, mm -hmm. what are some of the quotes that have affected you that helps you progress further? Mm. Wow. So one thing that I'll leave with the audience is when you think about your purpose. That's what we've been talking about today over the course of the last four days. View your purpose as your fuel. If you just chase profits and you just chase improving your product, mm -hmm. you lose sight of the reason why you started. Mm -hmm. So remember your why, lead with purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you come up against an obstacle, remember that your why and your purpose has to be bigger than every obstacle if you have intention to achieve your goal. So that's what I leave with the audience because that's how we got here at Collision. We're really the only black booth out here representing E110 and setting up for the fact that at some point in time, there'll be another black booth and another black booth. And in fact, it might be a whole black Wall Street at Collision. Mm -hmm. And we'll get a chance to showcase that our purpose and our why is bigger than the obstacles. And that's why we dream big here at Dream Legacy Foundation. You gotta dream big, man. Dream big, man. Dream that's big. it. Yeah. Beautifully said. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, the hustle is what you can control. So control your grind I control your life. I'm Alex. And I'm Owen Osinde. And I'm Eldon Holder from Dream Legacy Foundation. Bow, bow. That's the show, y'all. Ah. <laughs>